Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to my channel. My name is Frank. Today is the start of a very special series of videos I've been wanting to do for quite a while now, and it's how to get started 3D printing. Um, it's a question I get asked probably more than anything is where do I start? How do I get started? Uh, how much does it cost? In this series of videos, I'm going to be taking you through basically step by step all the processes and all the you know extras involved with 3D printing. So why are you here? Maybe you saw something online of somebody maybe making a cosplay suit or armor, or you have a buddy somewhere who's printing um, face masks or face shields for the NHS. You want to make parts for your car. You want to start turning this into a business and making little props and replicas to sell. Uh, you want to just have it as a fun STEM project for your kids or your family and have a little printer in your house. Whatever reason you're here for is absolutely fine and what you do with this information is completely up to you. But if you stay with me through this video and hopefully I don't scare you away, I'm going to slowly explain all the little bits and bobs that are involved with 3D printing. So you're browsing the internet, you saw something cool and you're like, man, I want to make that. And by doing just a little bit more research, you realize, wow, that was 3D printed. Somebody made that in their house. So where do you start? How do you start from A to, and get to Z? So through this series of videos, what I'm going to be doing and focusing on, because it's kind of my little you know, specialty, is taking you through the process of finding, printing, building, and finishing an Iron Man helmet. Now, something like this can be related and made basically back to absolutely anything. So you saw this online. You saw that I made this right now. You're like, I want to make that. So how do you start? I think the first thing you kind of need to figure out and realize and understand, how was this made? What is 3D printing? What is happening with this machine to then pump something like this out that you can actually physically hold in your hand? This is 3D printing filament. This is plastic PLA. And all it is is a long string of plastic that sits on a plastic spool and gets fed into the printer. All this printer is doing, it's a very, very advanced hot glue gun. This little nozzle right here moves left and right, this bed moves forward and back, and then this gantry right here moves this entire bar up and down. With that, you can move in all three axes, X, Y, Z, and now you have a little, very accurate, very precise hot glue gun pushing out melted plastic. And what it does is as it moves, it'll print onto the printer, make a layer, move up, make a layer, move up, make a layer, move up. And after that process, after a couple hours or minutes or even days, you can end up with something that is a fresh print. Now, it's not gonna look like this. This is nice and finished and painted. It's gonna look more something like this. This is a raw 3D print. And you can see up close, you can see some of the lines and just slight imperfections of the print, which is fine. So this is what you're gonna get when you're done printing. And from there, you can end up painting and finishing it and putting electronics in it, but that's a video for another time. So that's how 3D printing works. That's how you get from that digital file to a physical item you can hold in your hand. And that's the end of the video. I'm kidding. There's a lot of misconceptions about printing that it's a drag and drop hobby where you can find the model that looks like this nice and shiny and perfect, drag and drop it into the program and the printer spits it out. It's not that simple. I'm really sorry about that. Eventually maybe the technology will get there where you can actually print stuff that looks this good with plastic. There are metal printers, but they're tens of thousands of dollars. So you found, you found the thing you want to make. You're going to need to do research. Where are you going to get your file? Are you going to pay for it? Are you going to get it for free? That's another misconception a lot of people have. They think, I designed this. They think I designed this. I didn't. These were paid STL 3D files. Um, I got this from DO3D.com. They can also be had from great websites like Nico Industries, Maxcraft. Uh, you can find them on Etsy. You can find them on CG Trader. Or you can go to a free website like Thingiverse or uh, I think Colts 3D is the other one. And they have thousands and thousands of free 3D model files that you can just download for, that's it, free. This Keyblade was downloaded for free and printed. The Iron Man helmet sitting here in this display case was downloaded and 3D printed. The model I showed you before up here is just a finished product. So there's tons of free files you can get. So you immediately, before you even get into the hobby, you can start researching those files. Is this made? Is this something I can just get for free? Um, this little Thor's hammer I got for free and I scaled it down just so I could print it a little bit quicker. So figure out where, what are you going to get? Where are you going to get your file? Are you going to pay for it? Are you going to hire a 3D modeler to make it? Or are you going to want to learn how to make it yourself? So there's tons of other tutorials and videos on using drafting and AutoCAD software. This is not that. That is a whole discussion for another time. So I'm online. I realize, hey, I want to print this Iron Man helmet. This is the DO 3D Iron Man helmet, by the way. So I got the file. I I know where to get it. I paid for it. I doubt I have it. This is, this is it. The file's on my computer, right? But how do I get 
the, the 3D file physically into reality. So now you need a printer, right? So what are you trying to print? Are you making helmets? Are you making cosplay? Or are you making much smaller little figurines and little collectibles? Are you making brackets and uh, are you making face shields and face masks for the NHS? You need to kind of pick a little early on, unfortunately, what size printer you want. This is a Creality Ender 3, and it is, I think, the ultimate entry-level printer. It can be had for about $200, which really isn't that much at all, maybe a 220 250 at worst. It assembles in about an hour, and you can be immediately printed right off the bat. It comes loaded with a couple of test files. If that's the kind of printer you want, the kind of thing you want to go for, smaller, more detailed prints, get this. It's, the, it's perfect for the whole family, I promise you. Or you get a much larger printer, like a Creality CR-10S, a CR-10S5, a CR-Max. And what that'll allow you to do is print something much bigger, much faster. Now, that's not to say you couldn't print this on a small Ender 3. It just means you're going to have to cut the parts up a lot more. There's programs out there that let you take something like this. Obviously, I don't have a printer this tall. I definitely don't have a printer that tall. And it lets you cut the parts up into smaller pieces. This way, you can print them in sections and then later combine them, paint them. And I have a tutorial on actually how to like combine everything and that'll be put in this playlist too. But how quickly do you wanna make these things? So that's a choice you need to make and you're gonna be looking for something called build volume and that's how much space the uh, printer actually can print in. The Ender 3 can print in 220 by 220 by 250. My CR10S's can be 300 by 300 by 400, which is the difference between seven and eight inches to about 11 to 12 inches. So. Decide what you want. It's going to affect the price point, but do research. Amazon is a great resource for people just complaining about all the problems with their printers and anything you're going to run into. If you want to get the truth about an object, an item, usually Amazon's pretty good at uh, uh, letting those comments come through. So you found your 3D model. This is still on the computer, right? You have your 3D model, and now you know I want to get the Creality Ender 3, and it's on order in Amazon. But how am I still going to get this model into the printer? You're going to need some software. But man, that sounds expensive. 3D software, that's probably cost a couple hundred dollars. Luckily, there's a free program out there called Cura, which is 100% free. And it's what I've been using since I started 3D printing. That's what let me cut this all up into pieces and put it on my printer, model and view and kind of rearrange things. You can scale parts, make them bigger or smaller. Obviously, this isn't the size of Thor's hammer. I was able to scale this down 50% and print it on the Ender 3 in one shot. You could print a helmet like this or a suit like this on, the, on a smaller Ender 3, which is totally fine. You just, again, you're gonna need to cut the parts up. Um, a good program for cutting and sizing parts up like that is called Slicer. There'll be a link for that in the below so you guys can go check that out too. But download Cura, start playing with it. You can do that before you even buy the printer. You can find a free, uh, 3D file for a helmet or for whatever, download Cura, put the model in, start playing with it. See if it's, oh, this is actually pretty easy to use. And there's tons more tutorials on how to use Cura out there, including the one that I'm going to make. So now you have the program, right? You have Cura, you have your printer assembled, and you've already printed off your first little test piece. You have your 3D model or file, and now you're ready to start printing. What kind of filament or plastic are you going to use? There's different types. And that you can get more advanced with, but basically you're going to want to just grab your hands on some of the, the standard plastic PLA filament. This entire suit was printed in PLA+. Plus. It's a little bit stronger, it sands a little bit better. But again, as you learn more about the hobby and do research, you'll see that there's other types of filament. They make wood filament that looks like little carvings. They make rainbow filament, transparent and metallic filament. So there's a whole multitude of things you can use for that. But do printers work all the time? This isn't a microwave or a washing machine. This isn't just something you buy, hit go and it works. There's a lot of moving parts and it's still emerging technology. So there are gonna be pitfalls. Things are gonna break. There's belts, there's motors, there's a nozzle that gets up to 220 degrees Celsius. There's a computer and a main board and a power supply. Things will go wrong and you need to be ready to attack those. And I don't wanna scare you away from the hobby at all, but it is a little bit more hands-on than people think. Uh, I see people all the time, unfortunately, who get into the hobby and they bite off a little bit more than they could chew and they get frustrated. It can be frustrating and you, that's fine. That's part of the learning experience. You just need to push through because I promise it's worth it. There are so many times where I got frustrated building this thing and I had to take a day or two off or a break and just walk away or print something else, print something fun. It doesn't need to be this big long project and it doesn't need to be that aggravating. But just be warned that there are going to be times where something's going to break and you won't be able to print. These Creality printers are very, very easy to maintain, fix and repair. So please don't be deterred from anything of that nature. It's just, it's a little bit more hands-on than some people are ready for. 
but these parts are cheap. They're all, all, most of these parts are interchangeable where you can then get a new motor for five or $10. You can get a couple nozzle, different size nozzles for a few bucks. You can get belts. It's very simple and cheap replacement parts, which is just absolutely fantastic. And that's why I'm just, I'm a big fan of the Creality printers. They're just very user friendly and easy to learn on. So you know what filament you wanna use, you have your printer on the way, you have your software, you've played around with the file and you're ready to go. That's really all you need to get started. Like I said, you can get the printer for two, maybe $250, get a roll of filament for about 10 to $15, and you can make a whole helmet in less than one roll. This whole suit was made in about 14 rolls. So about $240, $250, I was able to print this entire thing. And you're gonna have failures, you're gonna have mistakes. Things are gonna not print right. This was the top part of the helmet that as it was printing, unfortunately, it got knocked off. Something with the printer wasn't right and the print was failed and wasted. You can save things like these and you can reuse them. This just kinda ended up making like really funny hat. So it's part of the hobby. Like I said before, you're gonna get frustrated at some times, but it's fine, it is so worth it when you push through. I really hope that helped explain to you guys just the very basics of 3D printing, what's involved with the printers and the filament. And through this whole series, I'm gonna be going so much more in depth with you. The next video is gonna be about the printer itself, the hardware, what is what it's made out of, how to assemble it, how to take it apart and fix it and troubleshoot little common things. And then the video after that will be about the software and the programming and what you can use to actually move and uh, rearrange the models and cut and slice. So please, Continue watching these videos and I really hope they help. If you guys have any questions at all or you want me to go more in depth, this video, this video series will be um, con always evolving and continuing. As we start talking about more stuff, I'll make more videos and address these questions and topics that you guys are asking me and you want to know more about. And then eventually, hopefully by the end, you too will also be able to make this little cute little Iron Man helmet or whatever model you want. This can be related and translated into basically anything you want to 3D print. Just because I'm gonna be going through the series making this, doesn't mean you can't go through the series making something completely different. Thank you for watching, and if you guys have any questions, please message me, drop a comment, do whatever you want, and have a good day.